What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods coming at y'all with another episode, man. Wednesday, April 28th. And, man, we're back. We got some breaking news in terms of the Southern head coaching search. And we got another big spring game to cover. I know a lot of our subscribers on YouTube are going to like this one with the Oklahoma Sooners, man. And me and Beat Over back. So let's get right into it, man. Southern. We talked about, you know, potential candidates, uh, what, Monday, Brandon? Oh, yeah. And we covered the opening Friday. Well, now Ian Rappaport tweeted out today that Marshall Falk could have serious interest about this. They said nothing is in stone, but Falk and Southern University have mutual interest about, you know, Marshall becoming the next head coach of the Jaguars. Brandon, how big, how, like, first of all, do you like the fit? Second of all, how big of a hire would this be for Southern? Um, yes, obviously I like the fit. You know, if I'm staying true to what I said the other day, we're looking for a, uh, if we're not going to hire, you know, uh, uh, Mickey Joseph or, or or someone of that magnitude, you want to hire from within the state. If you want to, like, I guess this is a trend now, Zach. I, I, I don't know. Um, but it seems more like the trend – in in uh in double a college football right now is let's hire running backs from super bowl 54 or 34 and <laughs> i guess southern's eyeing the better running back on the field in that game so um marshall falk is from louisiana he's from new orleans uh he went to college at san diego state whatever who cares um hall of fame player and like like i said it's following that trend i like it i mean obvious i don't i don't know i don't quite know his coaching experience or if he has any he doesn't none oh, great none. that's fine he was a he was an nfl he was a broadcaster for nfl network and then um was let go i think like a year or two ago so i don't know what he's been doing since then but i know he was a broadcaster for a while yeah so i mean it, it's a cool hire if nothing else i mean you see guys like Dion who have all this experience coaching, and then he lands a gig. Then we see Eddie George just come out of nowhere, land the gig at Tennessee State uh, in the Ohio Valley Conference. And now Southern's looking for a head coach. Their potential College Football Hall of Fame head coach leaves to go to Norfolk State. And um, Marshall Falk stepping up. And it sounds like the deal. I've been reading on it a lot, Zach, ever since you sent me this earlier. You texted me. I've been looking into this a lot, and it kind of looks like it's all but done. To be completely honest, so this is a this is super interesting to me, it, it, in just the way that he kind of came out of nowhere for this. Because, and yeah, the first time we spoke about it was Monday, but I mean, it, it seems like there's been a ton of names thrown in this hat, and Marshall Falk wasn't one of them. And suddenly <laughs> here he is. So this is. It's going to be definitely interesting to see how it plays out. I, I do like that they're trying to stick with this uh, Louisiana thing, and maybe they'll be recruiting Louisiana, like I mentioned on Monday's episode. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think it's an interesting hire, like you said. I, the biggest thing, as soon as this was announced, I wasn't sure off the top of my head where he was from. I said he's got to be from Louisiana, like you said, he is from New Orleans. That's a huge, huge pickup there in terms of having a local guy. That's something that. Eddie George has with Tennessee, like he played there. He's a legend in that area. So is Marshall Falk down in Louisiana. Now I know he played for the Rams and he went to he said San Diego State. So he didn't play ball in Louisiana, but he was a great high school athlete. He also was, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. He's in the pro, he's in the Pro Hall of Fame and he's in the College Football Hall of Fame. So can't go wrong there. So Brandon, here's the thing that I'm looking for. If they go with Falk. Is he going to hire Mike Martz as an assistant? Because Eddie George hired his coach, Jeff Fisher. Listen, hey, my, you know, Martz retired a few years ago, but he came back and was the head coach of um, an AAF team. And so yeah. if if he hires him, I mean, you know, we could have Super Bowl, whatever number it was. I, I forget what number they cool. played at. Yeah, we could, have a, we could have a reunion here if Tennessee State and Southern play, if he hires Martz. That's true. I mean, that's true enough. Uh, I'd be willing to bet on Southern in, in that game just based off of history. But um, who knows? You know, this is, it, it's definitely an interesting look. It, it just in the sense of, like I said earlier, it came out of nowhere. Like this is, I mean, it, it's crazy that 
something must have gone on, and, and this is purely speculation for anybody listening. There must have been something like you know, Mickey Joseph. Obviously, I mean, he from he, he interviewed, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. I don't. There's not. It's not been confirmed nor denied. But I would imagine he already got an interview. If I had so, to, if I had to guess. So if he was interviewed, then it must not have gone well, or or he must have been like, no, I'm I, staying at LSU, uh, because I, 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 don't, mean, I don't. I don't know. In, in my opinion, you don't go with. Yes, it's Marshall Falk. Yes, he's a Hall of Famer, but he has no coaching experience. If it's me, if I'm the one making the decisions, which I'm not, obviously, but. <laughs> But if it's me, I'm going with the guy with coaching experience. We want the guy who coached on a national championship winning team two seasons ago. That that's just me. It could be the revenge tour LSU's gearing up to have. I mean, LSU's bound to bounce back in a big way. And I mean, that wide receiving core is stacked. So maybe he wants to stick it out. Maybe he sees some writing on the wall for Coach Ed Orgeron. I mean, Brandon, if if with all the scandals and everything going on, if Ed if if Ed gets kind of backdoored here. I mean, wouldn't Joseph be one of the top candidates to maybe step in and replace him? He's I mean he's the assistant head coach. So yeah, probably. That's so, what I mean it, it, that's I what Ebron <laughs> was before he uh he was the assistant head coach under Les Miles for right before Les Miles got fired. So maybe. Yeah, but I mean I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm just speculating here because there are rumors that you know, there's more to this whole scandal coming out with LSU. Uh, we, we we don't want to get into too much of all that. But, you know, I'm interested with this hire. I mean, if when it first – like, this is breaking news, guys. This came out, I believe, we're recording like at 8.30. This broke at like 7. Yeah. So we were getting ready to record, put a pause on everything. We said we got to look into this, make sure it's a, a real thing. I trust Ian Rappaport, but I've seen shows like Pat McAfee. I've seen Undisputed. They all get fooled by tweets, so I had to double, triple check, make sure we get we give y'all proper information on this podcast. So this is breaking, breaking news. But, I mean, guys, when you look at him, he went to Carver High School in the Ninth Ward of New Orleans. He, I mean, he was probably one of the best recruits in the state. Goes out there, finishes second in the Heisman voting. Pro Football Hall of Famer with the Colts and Rams. I mean, Brandon, we've talked about what you get from these hires. Like, what is your main thing you're looking to get from this hire? And for me, it's attention. It's national notoriety. It's getting in those doors because players are like, I want to go play for Marshall Falk. I mean, if you're a running back in Louisiana and Marshall Falk comes walking in the door, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to hear you out. The same thing we talked with Dion when he was hired at Jackson State. Now, we, I have the same reservations I had with the Eddie George hire. I mean, are, is he – and, you know, Eddie George did it. He got Jeff Fisher. He got Hugh Jackson. Who is Marshall Falk going to bring in to surround himself to make sure this smooth transition goes over, especially for a first-time – ever head coach he didn't coach high school football like Dion. he hasn't even been uh you know the position ed re was in miami i mean he has not even been within a program so i'm very curious on how this is going to work out brandon but listen i i think a program like southern they they wouldn't be considering hiring someone that didn't have a vision didn't have a plan and that they don't think could compete uh for a swag championship here's what i say zach you want, to, you want to get an all-star cast over here at Southern? Uh, I, I don't want anybody to take this seriously. Get Kevin Falk on the staff. Just go with the Falk guys, uh, both Louisiana, uh, born and raised. So, you know, maybe both Hall of Famers. <laughs> what, what happens? Bring Drew Brees in. Why not? Let's just, let's just go full New Orleans. Uh, they buy me, man, we're going to keep all updated on this. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have a uh, episode kind of updating all whether this does go through. Like Brandon said, it could be imminent where as soon as tonight, maybe even tomorrow an announcement could be made and or this could be a smoke screen for something else. But there seems to be real fire behind this Marshall Falk to Southern uh, rumor here. But let's get to our final segment, man. We're going to try to stay on the time limit today. We haven't done that in like a month or two. But let's get to the Oklahoma spring game, man. You know, we've been covering a lot of spring games with quarterback battles, Brandon. Quarterback uncertainty. We don't have it here. Spencer Sanders is going to – Spencer Rattler is going to be the guy, not Spencer Sanders. That would be a huge downgrade. Don't do that. But <laughs> Rattler Rattler's going to be the guy. And you know, But there were some other positions I feel like really shot for the Sooners. But, Brandon, before I get to that, what did you take away from this spring game? Spencer Rattler looks good, man. He looks really good. <laughs> um, I, I know we already talked about him. 
and and we've kind of been harping on this. I had him as my top returning player in this upcoming year, or top returning quarterback anyway. Um, on what was that? It was like a week or two ago on the two minute drill. We ranked yeah. those. But yeah, I, I mean this guy. I mean this kid has all of the potential in the world, and he showed it. I mean I don't know. I don't have the exact stats right in front of me for this spring game, but. It was exciting to see him get out there on the field, um, to see him play, and to see how uh, – I, I don't know. I, to see how he clicked with his offense. I, I mean, you, you see Oklahoma year in, year out. They're just star-studded. And I, I feel like it's the same deal, you know, maybe less. Maybe they're rebuilding just a little bit. Uh, it's weird to say rebuilding for a college team. Um, it was interesting to see how the O-line played, I, I think. Uh, who's going to be playing where. Um, there's been a little bit of confusion there. It's the center guard position. I'm not sure if it's straightened out yet, but but it, it seemed to work for this game at least. But that, those are my main takeaways. Um, what I guess just quarterback offensive line looked pretty solid. Uh, we might see a little bit of a battle moving forward on that line. Yeah, I mean, they, they brought in uh, with Nia Morris from Tennessee. That was going to be a huge pickup. That dude can play just about every position, I think, other than center. I mean, you can play four four across the board, man. And my biggest takeaway, man, Eric Gray is going to be a superstar, man. I said it when he was at Tennessee. I think in this offense, listen, if you're an Oklahoma fan listening, Eric Gray is that type of running back with the type of potential where you go into national championship contention. I mean, really, really, if I had to pick a playoff right now, I would have Oklahoma as the one or two seed. Currently, yeah. especially with this offense with Radler, Eric, I know. Listen, I know Kennedy Brooks opted out. I know you know you guys have Ramondre Stevenson. I know there's been some talented backs. I think Gray is the most talented back Oklahoma's had in a minute. Yo. I mean, this the the explosion on this kid. I mean, this kid for me has the ability to be the number one running back in the country when he comes out to go to the NFL draft. I mean. He can do it all. I think he was stuck at Tennessee where they, you know, he never really had a quarterback to take any attention away from him. He had a decent offensive line, but that scheme that Jeremy Pruitt was running up there, not really, you know, I don't think it utilized him appropriately. And then you go, you go to Rather. Like you said, he was my number two quarterback or my number three quarterback going into the season. I think it's a top three guy, Heisman contender. So you already have him. And then I want to get to the wide receivers, Brandon. I, I really like what I saw out of Hazelwood, a uh, Jadon Hazelwood. You know, we haven't really seen a lot of this five star, but I really think he flashed some potential. He had a ridiculous one handed catch from Caleb Williams that he just made a play. And then you pair him with someone like Mario Williams, who all American. This kid came in really, really hyped. I thought he had a really, really nice game. I, I can see him being just an absolute stud once he develops. They did hold some people out, though, so I just think this wide receiving core, Brandon, is going to be ridiculous. Theo Weiss was held out. Um, I mean, but you just have so many players, and then Marvin Mims is still in that receiving core. I understand C.D. Lamb and the boys were balling, you know, a few years back. This receiving core might be as stacked as any that we've seen for Oklahoma in some time, and so you got your best running back in, a, in years. You have – arguably your most talented receiving core. You have a talented quarterback. you got your offensive line solidified. For me, if there's ever a year Oklahoma is going to make a run, Brandon, I think it's going to be this year. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. I mean, all the pieces are coming together, um, definitely. And that's one thing I forgot to mention, Zach. You, you brought up his name very briefly. Um, but I was, I was interested to see how Caleb Williams would play in this offense. Uh, he ran with the second team, dude, and it, it, he looked pretty good. Uh, to be completely honest, I mean, he, he completed 10 out of 11 passes. I would have liked to see him throw the ball a little bit more. But he passed for 99 yards. I was about to say 100. 99 yards, passed for a touchdown. Uh, I want to say he rushed for just over 60. So it, I'm, I'm not going to say he disappointed at all. I mean, dear Lord, 10 for 11 is pretty stout in a spring game, your first ever spring game especially. Um but, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that there's some people out there wanting to hear about Caleb Williams a little bit. He got a little bit of shine. I would like to see him throw the ball more. That's about it. Yeah. I mean, the offensive line for me, you mentioned that kind of – I feel like it was solved. I mean, I think they got five – I think they got their answer. They have five or six guys. 
that they know are the best five or six guys. Now they just have to figure out where they fit best in the offensive line. So I'm not as concerned as you are about the offensive line. I've just – the last thing I want to see – so, you know, you have this amazing, you know, that this absolutely outstanding offense, but – who is going to take over that nickel spot for me is one of the question marks I didn't see. Billy Bowman was not bad. You had Jeremiah Cordell sitting out the spring game. Um, you know, Tennessee transfer uh, Lawrence is back there as well. But who is going to, you know, take that spot that we saw that Buki transfer, you know, really take someone out of there who's been a starter for multiple years? I didn't see a true answer at that spot. I saw some promise. I really want, you know, that full group to be back. But I think that's going to be kind of a plug-and-play spot that we're going to see early in the season for Oklahoma. But I think if there's any D coordinator that Oklahoma's had that could figure it out, Alex Grinch is the guy that can figure out who to put in that spot. I agree. I definitely agree. But, man, guys, listen, if you're an Oklahoma fan, I just want to say this. So, and if you're not an Oklahoma fan, I also, want you, I also want you to listen to this. We've been on our, you know, Big 12 and 30 days run here. I understand Oklahoma hasn't won a national title in, in a while, and there's a lot of skepticism whether they can compete with the Alabamas, the Clemsons, et cetera. Let, let me tell you, if I had to put my money on it right now as someone who's covered college football – I think this is going to be the best Oklahoma team that we have seen in in multiple years. I think this is going to be better than the Baker Mayfield team. It's going to be better than the Jalen Hurts team, the Kyler Murray team. I mean, this is you're going to have to go back to find a team. I think that is going to be as good on defense as this team is going to be, and just have so many playmakers on the offense. I think Rattler can take that next step. But, guys, I think this is the time. I know you can't look too much in the spring games, but I saw everything I needed to see from the Sooners team. And for me, they are a bona fide, true national championship contender oh. this year, and they should have top three odds going into the season. Are we Are we going all the way back to, like, 03 right now? Is that – we're going back to early 2000s Oklahoma? I, I think it's going to be better than that team. Okay. Because Radler's definitely better than um, um, Blake. You know, I had his name. As soon as I started talking, I was about to say his name, and I just blanked on it. It's it's something white, I believe. Yeah. Is it Jason White or something like that? Sure. I think it's Jason White. Um, but anyway, if I'm wrong, Oklahoma fans, correct me in the comments. But, guys, let me know what y'all think about Oklahoma's chances. I'm very high. In my preseason season poll, I had them second. And right now, I, I, I would be hard-pressed, Brandon, right now not to put them first. That's how high I am on Oklahoma as of right this second. So, obviously, guys, we are much higher on the odds for Oklahoma to win this season out than we are for Texas A&M if you checked out our show yesterday. <laughs> Don't understand. Go put your money on Oklahoma if you're going to put them on one of those two, for sure. That's a fact. And, listen, I'm a huge Iowa State guy. You know, Barice Hall, great. Brock pretty great. They're returning a lot of starters, but – Man, it's going to be real tough to beat Oklahoma this year. I'm just going to be completely honest with y'all. If y'all didn't get them last year, man, you know, you get them out of that championship, you know, conference championship run, it's going to be tough. And I, I just think, Brandon, I will, it's going to be hard-pressed for me to see them see, to see them lose a game this year. No, I I, uh, I don't know if I definitely agree with you there, but I, I, I see where you're coming from. They always seem to choke in like one, so maybe. I mean, they're going to end up playing like Texas Tech on like a Friday night, and Texas Tech's going to score 85 and win 85-84. You were right with Jason White, by the way. I've been spending like the last 30 Let's go. Seconds. Let's up? go. <laughs> Let's go. Your boy kind of knows his football, I guess. Um, But, guys, you all know what to do, man. Give this video a thumbs up. We'll be back later this week, man. Five days a week, Monday through Friday with the two-minute drill. It's no better time to subscribe. We got our first round NFL draft live stream coming at y'all Thursday night, man. We're going to go live about 30 minutes before Tomorrow, the guys. draft. Do what? Tomorrow, guys. Check it out. <laughs> oh, yeah, or tomorrow. My bad. Yeah, because this will be coming out Wednesday. But, yeah, Thursday, man, we're going to we're gonna be on probably 30 minutes before the draft start. We're going to sort out the times later tonight and stream the whole first round, man. And, hey, we might have some special guests. Who knows? You know, you never know what you're going to get here on the Blue Bloods. But we did it last year, man. We appreciate all the support. So make sure to subscribe. Turn your post notifications on so you all know exactly when we put the stream up. We'll be streaming on Twitch. 
Periscope, Facebook, and right here on YouTube. So make sure to do that. And we're almost at 150 subscribers, man. We're halfway there. If y'all can get us to 200 by Thursday night when we start the live stream, we're picking another five of y'all to give the merch bundle giveaway, picking another five people. We already got our five winners from the 100. If y'all get the 200, another five of y'all are going to get it. Let me, so we appreciate all the support. Let me say this, guys. Get us to 200. Share this with your friends. Do whatever you have to do. Prove to us that your friends subscribe to us. <laughs> Maybe we'll show some favor in this drawing. Who knows? <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely give y'all a shout out, man. We appreciate all the support, though, for real, man. We we do this for y'all, man. But listen, uh, later this week, man, we got Oklahoma State, West Virginia coming up in Big 12 on our, to wrap up our Big 12 in 30 days theme. Starting Pac-12 next month, man. I am so excited for that. We got some great people lined up for that. But guys, make sure to subscribe now. But for right now, man, for myself, beat up two-minute drill, and the Blue Bloods, we are out.